payments for environmental services is uh, an area that has uh, seen a lot of development over the last uh, decade. Um, and it's basically uh, a way of, uh, of using compensations uh, to uh, make people change behavior and uh, uh, provide uh, benefits to society uh, for uh, in, in the environmental field. So this is uh, a, a, an innovative uh, conservation tool, you can say. There is, for example, I've, we've been working in Ecuador for for a while on a scheme where uh, where downstream water users pay a surcharge of 25% of their water bill to protect uh, the upper watershed from where their, their water comes from, uh, where there had been a lot of land colonization going on, and you're now paying people to to protect that land, uh, and do not convert it to pasture and agriculture, but instead uh, uh, leave it as a uh, as uh, regenerating uh, forests and uh, natural grasslands uh, and by through that secure uh, a more stable and cleaner water supply. It depends on the, on the area and on the type of land uses that replace its uh, forests. Uh, uh, we've just did a larger study in Brazil where we looked at the potential for pests in uh, regard to the Amazon forest land that is threatened by conversion until 2050. And we found that in particular uh, the extensive pasture uh, without a lot of technological inputs and, and slash and burn uh, itinerant agriculture are two land uses that can widely be bought out by by, uh, by pest measures. A main constraint has been on the demand side. Uh, there are some uh, benefits in society of biodiversity and also of, uh, uh, in terms of global warming, in terms of uh, carbon benefits that are where there are no uh, not enough payment mechanisms available and in that sense uh, RADD could be uh, uh, one powerful motor that could uh, uh, sort of uh, drive into that direction uh, and uh, pests could be on conversely uh, an important on the ground implementation measure uh, that could help uh, avoid deforestation uh, come true. I think it's a good idea to uh, to work with a number of uh, of uh, nascent schemes that still allow us to to actually uh, find out how these things are working. Uh, uh, it takes actually a lot of time to develop schemes, and and often it takes time to build trust between providers and sellers. It takes time to set the rules. On, uh, so I think we're still in a, in a pioneer phase where it's a good idea to, to gather experiences of what works under different uh, preconditions. We also are learning that under some circumstances, for example, where there's no clear land tenure uh, on the land that is threatened, where pests cannot be used. So it's not uh, a one size fits all type of measure, but it is uh, another toolbox, another uh, tool in the, in the conservation toolbox uh, that we can use, especially in those cases where there are hard, hard trade-offs between uh, conservation and development. Uh, the barriers are in the in the land tenure issues that are mentioned. I think there's a lot of deforestation going on uh, by land grabbing on public public lands, um, and on these lands you cannot use uh, uh, pests as a measure. Of course, you can use other measures, for example, improved uh, control of the of the uh, state forest lands from invasion. Uh, reduced violence in, in, in uh, rural areas. You can use these type of tools as implementation tools for, for red 
you can then use pests in, in other areas where there is clearly established land tenure uh, and where there's a, a steward that can be, that can be paid. Um, uh, I think there will probably also be some, uh, some obstacles at the government level because uh, I see red like a bag of money that you give to the Ministry of Environment to, to influence the policy process, to do things on the ground. But there are other bags of money to construct roads, to, to uh, uh, subsidize agricultural expansion. Uh, so there will be some competing goals and uh, it remains to be seen how much policy change RED can actually buy. It might be. There's, there's, uh, certainly, Brazil always has had a, a, a quite strong uh, opinion about things, and uh, and is slow to change that around. Uh, but I think just the, the the change that has happened over the last five years, under the influence of some of the uh, uh, some of the progressive NGOs and, uh, that have been pressing or, or sort of leading the Brazilian government towards a more innovative uh, position. Uh, that gives me some optimism also that Brazil can be a constructive player in the, in the global red uh, uh, regime. I'm trained as a macroeconomist. I started out in other fields diversified into uh, into the environmental area and uh, find that it is uh, a fascinating area where you still can develop a lot of new things and new thinking uh, and I also enjoy a lot uh, the interaction between desk-based work and uh, the possibility to go into the field to see uh, rural reality and changing land use in action uh, and uh, trying to influence that process uh, in fields that are, are globally very important uh, is uh, satisfactory in and of itself. For me, it's uh, the work on, on, on pests and on compensations for, for conservation is uh, uh, the result of having worked a lot in the past on deforestation issues and uh, times after times having found that deforestation happens because it pays off to, to the land users that are doing it. So finding these hard trade-offs, uh, you need to find a tool that is designed to deal with it. And I think uh, compensating people for changing behavior uh, is, is an, a more realistic, more honest and a more equitable way of, of addressing the major conservation challenges that we face.